And for Valentine's Day, dating app Bumble has hit the market priced at 43 a share, so a big increase on its first day of trading. Its founder and CEO, Whitney Wolfhurd, is with us now. Thank you for being with us, Whitney. Thanks so much for having me. So, I mean, obviously, uh, one can see the appeal when you consider the $2 billion that you've raised here. But why was public the right move for you? Why is this where you want to take the company? We have a very ambitious roadmap ahead of us to really change the face of not only love, but connection at large. We want to give women the opportunity to shift the paradigm of how connection and relationships have always gone, which is historically men being the first movers. And we want to create a kinder, more accountable experience where women are in the driver's seat, which makes it better for everyone. And in order to go and ex extend this across the globe and to take this to you know, every corner of the of the globe eventually down the road, we think and thought and believe uh, in this moment that being public was the right way to approach that. The, the, lots of questions I'm sure you get asked about how the process has changed and how you've had to adapt during a pandemic when it's harder for people to connect literally physically in person. What's different about a dating app today than it would have been even a year and a half ago? Yeah, so a year and a half ago, people were showing trends of joining the product or getting on the, the, the internet more broadly to date and perhaps having really quick engagement and then going offline, perhaps exchanging numbers or getting to know each other very briefly and then going and meeting in real life. And the pandemic has really changed the face of this industry in the sense that it has just accelerated the way people engage on a deeper level. And this has always been an assumption of ours. And uh, our our um, technology uh, arm has been very ahead of this. We had video dating in the product uh, a year prior to the pandemic. And so we were able to really um, optimize the experience as the pandemic hit and shutdowns and lock-ins started to be enforced. People were able to actually lean into the real benefit of online dating, which is getting to know each other digitally first and making sure that person on the other end is someone you actually do want to meet in real life. This makes it safer and more accountable and it adds so much ease and and it gives you control over the experience in the way you cannot quite achieve in the real world and so this is a trend that we believe is here to stay we really do believe that people have recognized the value proposition of having their first or second or mm -hmm. multiple first dates whether that's for love or friendship or otherwise on the product first before venturing into the real world and I, I know your a big source of revenue uh, is the premium service, uh, so the additional features that people can access. What what do you see along with the uh, the ad revenue that you are generating now? What's the potential growth for you on uh, you know your big user base? Is there some other kind of form of revenue that you haven't yet tapped? We believe we're just at the very early innings of the opportunities, even in the subscription model alone. There's so many levers we can pull. There's premium features we can introduce. There's lower tier features we can introduce. There's a lot of value additive features that people are interested in when it comes to their dating lives or their quest for friendship or their quest for connection more broadly. And so the opportunity to really introduce new features and optimize the pre-existing ones and to convert payers along the way is very, um, it's very lucrative down the road. It is a crowded space. Uh, as you well know, you founded two of these businesses. Uh, how do you differentiate and how do you, how do you fend off uh, upstarts? Because people do tend to kind of try a service and then move on to another service. How do you make sure the churn uh, keeps people coming back to you? Yeah, I've now had the privilege of being a part of two of, of these very popular, um, you know, consumer brands. And what, what I have recognized through my experience is just how important the brand itself is. And our core differentiator from day one, and we believe it will be a driving force, not the only driving force, but a driving force as we go on, is the strength of our brand. This moat we have built through a woman making the first move. This gives her deeper control over her experience. It's a barrier to entry. And candidly, we just looked at the market and recognized that 50% of the population is women. And there had never really been a technology business strategically designed for the needs, wants, and and the, the safety of women. Um, and so by taking that thesis and applying it not just to dating, but to a broader 
brand and a broader platform for how women are treated on the internet is really going to stay a competitive advantage for us as we go forward. And candidly, the LTV opportunity we have has always been rooted in what we're doing. We never wanted to build just a dating product. Uh, you know, back in the early days, we agreed starting with dating is the right approach. There's so much opportunity to transform dating and to capture that remarkable TAM of online dating while having extensibility permission to do more. And when you think about doing more, uh, you could easily see some of those existing social media platforms that have the similar kind of powerful reach getting into this space. Can you get into their space? Can you com compete with uh, some, some areas that are completely uh, distanced from the dating side of things? We fundamentally believe we can because dating is not that disconnected from friendship or community or your business connections. You and I are on our own version of a date right now. This is just a professional <laughs> date. And so when you think about that category expansion, it becomes very natural and it doesn't feel disjointed. And so you can see the ease and the opportunity to just really modernize the way we connect more broadly and make that digital first. And so I think what we will see in the coming years to follow is this explosion of social discovery, not just dating discovery. It is great to have you with us for this. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Whitney Wilford is the founder and the CEO of uh, Bumble. And as we noted, the stock has shot higher uh, in its IPO today. It joins other publicly traded companies, including Match, in the public market. 74% uh, is the current gain off the $43 list price or IPO price for Bumble.